So next we have a 180 from Dan Bartlett, who's CEO of Hill and Knowlton Strategies and was previously the chief communicator for President George Bush and who will be on the election panel this evening. So. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about tonight. There'll be a lot of conversation about the role that technology played in the victory that Obama, President Obama uh, had last week. And a lot of it will focus quite extensively on, I think, what we in the previous panel talking about uh, the future of retail and data and platforms and mobility. A lot of those three components were used successfully by President Obama. But to talk a little bit about my 180 and when it comes to technology and the role it has played in, in partisanship in Washington, D.C., um, I think uh, the public kind of le is left scratching their head and they say they're disgusted with what's going on in Washington, yet there was very little change when it came to not only the White House but in the Congress as well, particularly. And my 180 particularly came from having gone up successfully with, another, with a politician and everybody entering into the White House thinks they're going to be the leader that changes the dynamic, that's going to change the tone in Washington. And everybody says, if we just had a great leader to step in and change the tone, we'd all be better. And we'd, we could uh, work in a bipartisan way. And what I have found and what my experience was working in the White House for eight years is that there is a s systemic partisanship now. And one of my 180s on that, and I'll, I'll speak more about the one with technology in a second, it's really driven by two principal factors. The first one is redistricting. And what we have done over the last 20 years through the gerrymandering of congressional districts to where we now have on both sides of the aisle what I call 80-20 districts, meaning on the Republican side, the seats are 80% Republican, 20% Democrat. And on the other side, we have 80% Democratic seats with only 20% 20, 20 Republican. And there's very few toss-up congressional seats that are actually 50-50, 55-45, where the middle really matters. So every day when a member of Congress is waking up, they're more worried about their, their left flank if they're a Democrat or a right flank if they're a Republican. There's no incentive for there to be compromise in the middle. And so when you have that dynamic, uh, when there's fewer and fewer, and you know, 20 years ago, you had about 50 or 60 swing districts. We no longer have that now. What was counterintuitive for me is the second one. And that is you would think that technology and access to information would help the environment in Washington by exposing people to more information. When Ronald Reagan ran for re-election in 1984, nearly 70 million Americans got their news from ABC, CBS, and NBC. In 2000, that number had dropped to about 35 million. And now that number sits at about 20 million. So when that number is coming down, there's been obviously this explosion of information being found elsewhere. And the conclusion you would draw is to say, if people are being exposed to more opinion, more information, that that would lead to a more thoughtful dialogue and hopefully consensus on the big issues of the day. But what I have found and what the people in the practice have found is that technology has turned out to be an accelerant to the partisanship. Because if you think about it, maybe in your own viewing habit, uh, your own habits in mind, is that if you're politically inclined now, you go to blog posts or to websites that reinforce your views first. And then you get your talking points, and then you go and have the debate with friends maybe on the other side of the aisle or who have come from a different political persuasion. And so we have, so if you're center right, you're going to redstate.com or to Drudge Report or to those sources. And if you're uh, center left, you're going to Daily Coast or HuffPost and those places. And so we've made it far more efficient to be partisan. And uh, that is something that, you know, technology is not to blame, but it's a factor in the, in the sense that it's definitely playing a role in making it easier for people to reinforce their own political views, not question them. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dan. No, there is a minor contradiction to that. All, I mean, I know that on Twitter, everybody was being directed to Fox News when your friend Karl Rove was suddenly like trying to do wish fulfillment and, and they, they were walking down the hallways trying to find there out what There used to be people like us who would keep him behind a, a door, a closed <laughs> exactly. door and lock him up. But, but now he's all on his own and he just says or does Twitter whatever Twitter led a lot of liberals over to Fox News <laughs> for at least 15 minutes there on election night anyway. But That's great. Thanks so much and you see bet. you tonight.